Welcome back to the official Monster Hobbies YouTube channel. My name is Trevor Slescu, owner of Monster Hobbies, and today we're going to be looking at AMT Ertl's 1997 Corvette Coupe. Now, this is the new edition Corvette. It is a C5, the very first one, so you don't want to miss this great video. Do you like building model cars and everything? Do you want a YouTube channel that only focuses on model cars, tips and texts, and many other cool things? If so, I want to tell you all about the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage YouTube channel at the end of this video. So stay tuned for that. And now without further ado, let's go down to the bench and take a look at our 97 Corvette. Now let's go all the way back to 1997 to our GM showroom as we take a look at the Corvette C5. 1997 Corvette Coupe by AMT Ertl. On this side of the box we get to see these wonderful photographs of the 50 years of Corvette starting with the 53 Corvette and ending with the 2003 version and here we have our 97 Corvette Coupe the first of the C5s again looking nice in this three-quarter shot off the side here. And on this side of the box we get a photograph of the interior of the car as well as the engine bay and the side profile. Now this model kit is a skill level 2 for the moderate builder, ages 10 and up, requires glue and paint to get the job done. And now we'll open up the box lid and take a look on the inside. Get on the inside track. So here we go, I bought this at Walmart June 7th, 2003 for $4.95. I think it was in a 3 pack maybe, I don't know. There's the uh, Corvette 50th anniversary little brochure that we got. Now here we've got a glass in the bag, body in the bag, body bag, perfect for Halloween. <laughs> There's our chrome wheels and accessories. And then here we've got all our parts. And then in this corner, in this corner here, weighing at 97 pounds, we've got our tires. So what I'll do is I'll clear all this out of the way. And oh, there's decals down there. Danny the dog can take a look at those. We'll clear this out of the way and then we'll get to our dog on the street. Hey everybody, this is Danny the dog, your divine canine, saying how's it going today? I hope you're doing well. So here we are back on the bench and we're going to be taking a look at the 1997 Corvette instruction sheets from AMT Ertl. So as Trevor was saying, 1997 marked the beginning of the C5 Corvette. And as you can see here, it's a total redesign from the C4s that we were doing earlier. Now right in here is a big write-up on this car. You know they use balsa wood in the body panels? That's pretty cool. You have to read this. Uh, I think Trevor will put it in the description below. So step one, we've got all this before you begin. And it's saying, you know, to test fit and carefully study and understand the instruction sheet. And then for your best possible finish, your kit should be painted and on and on. And then we also have the Racing Champs logo down here. And uh, this came out in 2002. So AMT has decided to use a lot of photographs in this instruction sheet, but overall it's not too bad. You've got your right and left hand side engine block and then the oil pan which glues up from underneath. Once you get that assembly done, you can then add on your intake plenum, your right and left hand side cylinder heads and the front cover throttle body. And that glues there, these glue here and that glues down there. Panel C shows the ignition covers being glued on top of the cylinder heads. And then you get your exhaust manifolds left and right. A little power steering reservoir cap which glues up on here. And then your pulley and belt assembly glues onto the front. Step D shows our oil filler cap being glued on top of those ignition covers. As well as the alternator bracket and the alternator getting glued on here. I do believe the bracket would fit into the front of the engine. And down below we have our AC compressor which will glue onto this pulley right here. Now here we have our chassis assembly and again there are four steps to this. So here we have our exhaust system which will be cleaned up and then glued down onto the chassis. Part B uses the rear axle assembly. Now this is the spring back here. And then we've got a left and right hand for our torque tube and transmission. And that will all glue down onto the chassis. Step C shows the lower rear assembly suspension package going on. There you've got your left rear spindle and right rear spindle, as well as your shock absorbers. So all this glues over top of that rear axle there. And then in the front, you've got your entire front end clip. And then again, your shock absorbers. 
and here you've got your right and left hand side front spindles and all those will glue into that chassis. And step D shows our engine from the previous assembly being glued up in here. So of course the transmission is going to go onto the drive shaft pin and then I do believe there's a little hole here which will glue onto a cross member. But we'll take a look at that when Trevor looks at the plastic parts. Now the fourth step is our 1997 color availability chart. And this is always a great help. So you have Arctic white, black, fairway green metallic, light carmine red metallic, Nassau blue metallic, Sebring silver metallic, and torch red. And for the interior there is graphite leather, Teredo red leather, and pewter leather, leather. So what you could actually do here is make the original 1953 type car which came out in arctic white and inside you would use your Torio red leather. This is to duplicate colors using stock aerosol automotive touch-up finish colors. Use this procedure. It should be noted that these directions must be carefully followed to prevent the usual crazing of the styrene which occurs when automotive lacquers are applied directly. First, mist on two coats of lacquer primer. When completely dry, follow with a very light coat of touch-up, then apply successfully heavier coats until the desired finish is achieved. Panel 5 shows our interior assembly, and here we've got our dashboard. And Corvette in this year went back to the circular gauges, which is really cool. And uh, we've got our pedals down here. So this looks to be an automatic this time around, because there's our gas and there's our brake. And there's our radio and uh, yeah so that's our dashboard and again it's really nice that they uh, do a zoom in on this so you know just how to paint it all. Now panel B shows our interior starting to go together so here we've got our bucket seats front and back being glued together and drop down into our interior. This is almost a bucket but not quite because it's got the open doors on there so then here we have our center console being glued in place with the emergency brake and our gear shift lever. And panel C shows our dashboard being glued in place. First you put on your left and right hand side door panels, then you put in your dashboard because they actually click into little slots and they've got pegs up here. And then you've got your steering column and your steering wheel which glues right through the column into the hole in the dashboard. Panel 6 shows our tire wheel assembly. And the Corvette for this year also had those directional tires. So make sure that you read the side where it says which way the tire is going and make sure you put your wheels into the right direction on each side of the car. Now this shows the front wheel, but basically the back wheels are the same as well. Actually exactly the same. So you've got your outer wheel, your tire, remember that rotation direction, and then a disc brake, which also acts as a wheel retainer clip. And that goes into the inner wheel. Now the spokes are open so you'll be able to see those and just to show you that the uh, the rear wheels go together the same here they are down here. Now I'm not too sure if the rear wheels are wider or if all tires were the same. We'll have to take a look at those when we look at the plastic parts. Now panel 7 has an A and a B so for A we're going to put our mirrors onto the side of the car and this has the housings as well as the mirror which is chrome. And then up front we've got the driving fog lamps going into the front fascia and our license plate cover which glues into the little hole right there. And all this glues onto our body. Now step B shows the rear fascia being glued onto the back of the car. But before you do that remember to put in your right and left hand side taillights which will glue into the little holes back here. And now we get into the final assembly of the kit. So there's our body again and now we add in our back glass and we also add in the windshield and now you'll notice that this is part of the roof up here so you'll need to paint that a roofy color or a car body color and the trim around the windshield is actually flat black and then you glue in your mirror there and a master brake cylinder right into here. Panel B shows our body being dropped down onto our assembled chassis engine and interior and then you get to glue your wheels on in all four corners. Panel C shows some of our decals being put in place and here we also drop down our hood and there's our complete radiator assembly as well as the air intake. So you've got two fans, the radiator fan shroud, upper and lower radiator hoses and that air intake. 
So once all this is complete, you'll have a really nice looking fifth generation Corvette. Well, thank you very much, Danny, for going over those instruction sheets. And as usual, you do a real bang up job. So in the old Corvette C4 videos that we did before, a lot of people were telling me that actually Monogram made a better model kit than AMT did on those C4s. So here we get to see how the C5 stacks up. And this is a completely new mold, so hopefully AMT has got it right. Now take a look at all this under the hood, like windshield wiper bottles, overflow bottles for the radiator, and then battery cover boxes and everything. Again, looks really nice. You got the headlights, which are folded down up here. Then on the side, we have the nice sunken in door handle and the turn signal lights. Now, if I remember right, the C4, like normally you would put a black line into the doors just to make them show up. But I think the Corvette engineers arranged it so that when you look through the door panels, you'd actually see body color in there. So uh, that's one thing you might want to research. It's been a long time since I uh, really was too into all the Corvette stuff. But that's one thing I do kind of remember is that they tried to make it so when you open the door, you, could, you wouldn't see a black line in there. You would actually see body color. So again, if you're one of those guys that uses a pen to go around the doors to outline it, you don't do that on these generations of Corvettes. There we've got the fuel door up top. And again, I, I think it looks pretty good underneath. Not a little couple mold marks in there, but nothing too severe. Nothing that uh, really stands out like some of those old molds. Well, again, though, the, the C4 Corvettes were made by MPC originally. An MPC wasn't that smooth in that time frame, and then AMT ended up with them. But overall, I would say this one looks really, really good as brand new tooling. Now on this parts tray, we have our wonderfully designed chassis, as well as our suspension components for both the front and the rear. Now, unfortunately, this is sort of done as a one piece, a simplification, but the detailing on it is quite nice. I mean, look at all the cross braces and everything in there. And then again on the back, now, this has the A-arms front and rear, so it's quite the independent style suspension. This is the spring right in here, and I do believe it's a mono leaf, so it doesn't have any of the uh, stacked up leaf springs like the earlier Corvettes. Again, look at the nice crisp detail in here on the chassis. Who's built one of these? Let us know in the comments down below. How did you like it? Did you love it or did you hate it? Anyway, look at this uh, deep interior here. I guess that's part of the balsa wood. Apparently it was sandwiched in between the plastic on the floor and it actually reinforced this quite a lot. That's what the instructions say. But overall, I think AMT did a great job. I mean, look at that. No mold marks in there. Oh, okay, there are. <laughs> but they're very low. I mean, you, you can't even feel them in there. So that's pretty nice. Just a little run over with some sandpaper would get rid of them. But overall, I'd say this is really excellent. Now this parts tree includes our interior, which is upside down. We'll take a look at it as we flip it over. But there's that wonderfully molded dashboard, our center console, our steering wheel, our steering column, our brake lever, our gears shift, as well as our right and left hand side mirrors. And this is a little plug for the front bumper. All right, let's bring this up in the camera and take a look. So there's all the wonderful instruments. Again, they're using the circular gauges like back in 63. And they also have the dashboard style like in 63. That's what they were going for in 2000, or 1997, I should say. And then look at that center console, really nice. Okay, let's flip this over. Let's see the interior. Wow, there's the interior looking really great. You can see where the seat belts would be coming in off of there. Again, it's got that center uh, little compartment in there like the 63 Corvette did. And then down in here, we've also got our console. Now this is quite wider than the 63. Again, because of the different type of suspension and technology going on under there. There's also a nice little floor mat in there. So again, really nicely done by AMT. And there's not really any flash to be talked about. Our next parts tree starts showing us the engine and all that drive line. So there we've got our right and left hand side engine block. The transmission is really kind of small on here, so it must be a new style of automatic. There's our cylinder heads and the plenum. 
as well as all the other different engine components. So let's bring this up. Let's just take a look at the detail. Bask in the glory. It's interesting that they have these heads open. That's uh, kind of unique. Again, look at the nice detailing on this component. There's a sink mark under here on that pan. So you might want to uh, fill that in with some filler just to flatten it off. Again, excellent work on here. AMT really outdid themselves on this year. Take a look at that. Really nice. There's the oil pan there in the little center hole that you glue it onto the undercarriage. Again, not really any mold marks back here. Uh oh, I got a part that broke loose. That's not good. It should still be in the bag though. But overall, I would say this is really excellent for the C5 Corvette. Here I have two parts trees together. That's because they are narrower than the other ones. So what we have here is our wheel backs. We also have this exhaust system with the muffler sitting sideways. I do believe this part goes in between the seats, but I'm not sure on that. Now here we've got our wheel retainers, which are also the disc brakes. And then we've got the suspension components in here, as well as the steerable components. And there we've got our shock absorbers. So again, the detail work is really excellent on here. You can see the nice brackets and the little flex tube type ribbing going on in there. Again, really wonderful work. Not much mold marks and barely any flash. So again, excellent. Look at those brake drums on there. Again, those are wonderful, really crisp, crisp like crispy Kit Kat chocolate bars. I don't know, <laughs> but overall this ends up looking really nice and this should be a really easy kit to put together. On this part street, we have the front nose of the car as well as the back. And there's the little opening spot for your license plate to go into as well as one for the back. Now remember there is a plug that says Corvette that you can glue in, which is really nice. I kind of wish the C4 Corvettes had that, but they don't. So that's a good improvement plus for this kit. There's that front intake, as well as our fan assembly here and the radiator. So again, I mean, really excellent work. You can't complain about this one. This kit is pretty amazing. So like I asked before, if you've built this, let us know in the comments down below. How much did you like it? Look at it's got the little parking brake light in there or stop brake, uh, whatever. And it also has the Corvette right in there. I think that's a backup light, if I remember right. But anyway, again, overall, a really, really nicely done. This parts tree has our hood on it, as well as the right and left hand side door panels with all the door latches and the mechanisms. And then we've got our seat backs as well as our seats. So bringing this up to the camera, you can see the nice detail in those buckets. Again, look at the leather, like you, you when you look at this, you really know that this is leather. And uh, AMT did a really wonderful job on molding that. Again, look at those door panels, really nice. They even have the buttons going up into the curvature. So that's really wonderful. Under the hood, we get the fireproof matting in here. Again, really excellent work. And look at how the seats, they've got this uh, slot and hole kind of thing to line them up perfectly. So again, AMT did a really wonderful job on this. I wonder if that crew that made the uh, 62 Ford Thunderbird worked on this model because it really does look like their work. Now before we look at the chrome parts tree, I just want to ask one question. Maybe some of you older model builders would know this, but does Ozzy Osbourne's Crazy Train run on the Grand Funk Railroad? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Okay, so now we move on to the chrome and there isn't really much. There's just those mirror inserts and the chrome rearview mirror for the center. And then here we've got our four wheels. So let's just take a look at those. Again, they do look really, really nice. Very clean, very crisp, and no flash ma. Overall, I'd say these are really excellent. So there you go. There's your chrome for the Corvette. And here's our clear components for the kit. So right here we've got our roof as well as our front windshield. And actually it's kind of nice that AMT did it this way, even though it is a little more trickier to paint. That means that this all looks like one nice fresh piece instead of, you know, having a gap under the windshield or anything like that where the roof goes. Then here we've got our turn signal lights for the front. We also have our red plastic tail lamps and our rear window in the back here. Not starring Clark Gable though. <laughs> anyway. 
um, yeah, so, or Jimmy Stewart, wasn't it? Rear, anyway. So uh, this has the line around it, so you can paint inside there all flat black and make this thing look right. I do believe you want to paint the top of this. So you could even mask the window here. I don't know how easy that would be, but overall I think this ends up looking really nice. See, they even have the windshield wipers molded in place as well as a bit of that vent down there. Again, really excellent work. This was double bagged in the model, so there'd be no scratches on it. And again, look at those nice tail lamps. If we turn them over, you can see a little bit of a pattern underneath. Well, maybe not. There are some mold marks in the back, but nothing too, too concerning. Overall though, I do think this glass is top notch. And here's the tires for the kit. Now these are Goodyear F1 Eagles. So these are Formula One type racing tires, specially designed for this Corvette, I do believe. Now, one thing, remember I was saying they were directional. One thing that's nice about these is they have writing on one side of the tire, and then if you turn it over, it's blank. So that means that it's not that hard to uh, get them in the right direction. Just make sure you look for those little directional arrows, because again, you, I don't know, can you get this wrong? If these are on the inside, no, you wouldn't be able to get them wrong. Just make sure that your backs are the smooth side going in and the front have the raised letters sticking out on the side of the car. Now, the tires are just a bit slightly smaller. So the back ones are taller, but it is a little bit hard to see these. So make sure that you don't get them confused because we're only talking a little bit higher in the back. These are the beginning of the uh, low profile tires for that time period. Again, look at that nice tread detail. Very, very cool. So again, I do believe these are very wonderful tires and they are easy to clean up and will look awesome on your model. So here we've got our decal sheet for this great model kit. And as you can see, there's really not much decals here. You got your front and back Corvette emblem, and then a 50th anniversary license plate, and then a Georgia My Vet license plate. And that's it. Well, I really hope you enjoyed that look at our AMT Ertl 1997 Corvette Coupe. So at the beginning of this video, I was talking all about the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage YouTube channel. What is that? Well, if you want to know what it is, it's basically a channel that is exclusive to model cars. So you get to learn tips and tech. You also get to check out unboxing videos that are not on this channel as well as show and shine videos of both my model cars and my dad's and I even build models over there so you get to see how to put them together in order to get the steps correct and see my take on building these models. So if that sounds like a channel for you check out this video right here it tells you more about it and this video or sorry this little icon down here if you click your mouse on that it takes you directly to that YouTube channel. So until next time, everybody, happy model building, and we'll see you in the next video.